A lot of times, uh, Christians get into these social situations where they got to disagree, right? They got to disagree with whatever is said by a friend, maybe a co-worker, a colleague, and it can get very, very tense, very difficult to manage. So I want to talk about that. But uh, So I put some notes here, right there, because this is a topic that might take one or two videos. But uh, the first thing we got to remember is this is social gatherings, this is social conversations, very casual. This is not about debates. This is not about, you know, formal uh, spiritual debate topics online where you can, you know, like think of what you say. This is more of face-to-face -face, um, disagreement on the spot in a way that's not necessarily evangelistic, but at least you get your point across, right? So... The first thing we got to understand is that values make up a person's conscience, beliefs, core values, and identity. So whatever a person believes, that's going to formulate how he responds to agreements and disagreements, objections and affirmations. Uh, he's going to uh, respond positively or negatively depending on that. And because the core beliefs and identity and conscience is so strong, uh, a person might feel like his pride is being attacked, his ego is being attacked. Uh, he can have these emotional, mental securities or insecurities and can even feel a little threatened, okay? So, uh, and you, you felt that, right? When someone disagrees with your faith, with your religion, things like that, um, you do feel sometimes that your, your whole personhood is being attacked. Uh, same thing that happens with politics, especially when people are ultra, ultra, ultra loyal to a certain politician. Uh, when someone disagrees with that politician, they already feel attacked, like they're being assaulted, right? So we got to be careful. We got to remember these things. Now, with that in your consciousness, there are three simple things that I'd like to talk about. Basically, I say it this way, truth, tone, and timing. But this time, we're going to reverse it. It's going to be timing, tone, and truth, okay? Because we're in social gatherings right now where people disagree. So it's timing, tone, and truth. First thing about timing, you gotta ask yourself, is this the right time to disagree or should you rather stay silent, right? Like, are you attending a wedding and the person's giving a speech and you're giving a speech next and then uh, he said something unbiblical, so in your speech you're gonna contradict him in public in the wedding reception. Like, that's probably not uh, the right time. Is this a reunion? Is this a birthday party? Is this a dinner? You know, someone just died and you're at a funeral. Do you immediately just go, you're all wrong worshiping this and that, you know, like, or, or would you, would, should you wait for another time? So timing is very important. You got to ask yourself, who are you disagreeing with? Is this just a, a good friend or is this the host of a party? Is this a, a fellow guest? Is this a good uh, a colleague or is this your boss, right? So you got to be very careful with that. Timing is so important. The discussion sometimes can already be so heated. There's already explosive tension and you just don't want to add more tension to that. Don't add fuel to the fire. But if there's room, if you feel that there's, you know, you got to learn about these, you know, discern. Is there room for more tension that can allow for some, uh, you know, disagreement? Or should you diffuse tension first? Maybe crack a joke. Maybe make people laugh or smile. You know, so you got to ask those questions because uh, sometimes even the person you're talking to might be normally argumentative. If the person you're talking to is normally argumentative, very quarrelsome, uh, always antagonistic, maybe the person is just someone you should not even deal with, right? If the person is habitually antagonistic towards you, like, you know, every time he talks to you, he just disagrees. He always attacks. He's always on the rampage against you. Then maybe you just don't have to deal with this guy anymore right uh, especially when you've extended an olive branch i've actually experienced this uh it was online but still um, i extended an olive branch i apologized if if in case i offended the guy uh, i was trying to be you know gentlemanly and respectful but then he still throwed shade uh, through shade and i'm like why is this guy throwing shade after i extend an olive branch i tried again and he's like oh come on this isn't right anymore so i kind of expose his behavior and he's not even repentant he's just like ah oh, because you're like this ha, 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 bam. i'm like okay we're done with this. I'm not even discussing things with you anymore. So I just biblically avoided them, right? Because it's it's pointless. It's useless. It's a waste of your time. So timing is so important, right? The following, the second thing you got to take a look at is tone. Uh, you got to understand tone is more than just your volume. It's your, it's your volume. That's one. If you're raising your voice, ah, 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 you know, it's your pitch. 
are your is your is your tone low or is it going up is your pitch going up and of course there's timbre not timber timber is when a, a, a tree falls but your timbre now you can google these things on what makes a good tone pitch and timbre uh, but the first thing I would say is pause and take a deep breath right like just pause take a deep breath take your time relax chill and you know slow your pace why when you take a deep breath and you slow down your pace you're you're going to cause other people to slow down as well you you end up diffusing the tension by slowing down remember you're not ben shapiro you're not like a machine gun of information just just fires from your brain through your mouth you know that's you're not ben shapiro right so slow down sometimes you can even diffuse tension using humor cracking a joke smiling a lot uh, you know, and not a sarcastic smile, but a real smile, genuine smile. Uh, you can even sympathize or empathize with them. You don't have to agree, but you can say things like, you know what, bro, I hear you, or I understand where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. You can say things like, you know, I can relate with what you said, or I love when you said this. Because remember, we, we always have common ground with people. It doesn't mean because you disagree with the person, you disagree with every single thing he says. I'm sure there are certain things that you will end up agreeing with. So find that common ground, find your common values, your common goals, and then verbalize the unity in those areas. So you can say things like, I agree with when, with you when you said this. I like that you said that. You know, I actually, uh, we're united in this area, right? So remember this, people usually have shared goals and values. They just have different methods, right? Like everybody wants peace. Nobody wants war. Or well, maybe very few people, but most of the time people want peace. Most of the time people don't want war. People just want to be respected and to respect others. People want to feel uh, loved and they people feel like they want to belong. So we all have common goals, values. We just have different methods in achieving those. So if you can find that common ground, that's already one step into... Uh, uh, disagreeing in a very gracious and loving way lastly truth when it comes to truth so it's uh, timing tone and then truth is last please avoid fighting words don't say things like oh that's stupid oh, that's foolish oh that's so idiotic you know where's your common sense don't you even read books you know avoid sarcasm oh you're the smart one now you know like just avoid sarcasm avoid mockery avoid those things uh, because those just increase tension Instead, I would say affirm their accurate assessments of your view because, of course, they're, they're saying something. So you have to affirm the truth of their statements. And if they're accurate in their assessment of your view, then affirm them. Then ask genuine questions to represent them accurately. You got to represent them accurately because that's a sign of respect. So you, you can say things like, bro, correct me if I'm wrong. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But are you actually saying or do you believe that? And then try to rephrase their beliefs in a way that's very accurate. After that, you can begin asking questions that reveal inconsistencies because we're, we're hardwired to be consistent. We don't like cognitive dissonance. And you can Google cognitive dissonance somewhere else, right? But nobody likes to be cognitive, to experience cognitive dissonance. Everyone wants to be consistent. So ask your questions that reveal inconsistencies and then state your own thoughts in a way that you're you're sharing your thoughts. So say things like, uh, let me share with you where I'm coming from. I just want to share with you my thoughts. Or here's my opinion or here's my thoughts on the matter. So instead of saying, you're like this, just you know, share your thoughts. Then see where it goes from there. Lastly, summarize. Summarize with what's common. Summarize your methods. And then summarize the results you're both hoping to achieve. That way maybe... Uh, when you disagree, it's more peaceful, it's more genuine, and it's more respectful. God bless you guys.